Hello, viewers, and praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Pastor Patrick Mwangi. I welcome you to your Distinctive Destiny program right here from Maturity Network TV, coming from Nakuru Happy Church. I pray that God ministers to you as you join us in this program today. In the mighty name of Jesus. We have been talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ. What we refer to as the blessed hope. And this is the hope for the church. Is the hope for every believer. That one day, you know, Jesus will come back again. As he promised. That I have gone to prepare a place for you. And once I have finished, I will come back for the church. I will come back for you. That was a promise that Jesus made in the book of John. And so we continue to believe in this um, a hope that he is coming back for the church, the church that is pure, the church that is ready, the church that has been sanctified, the church that has been, you know, washed, you know, by the precious blood of Jesus. And so I encourage you once again, as I said yesterday, please forward this message to your friend. If you have a friend, a colleague, a neighbor, or a family member that is not born again, you need to share this word with them. You need to share it with them in the name of Jesus because we need them to come to the kingdom of God. We want them to join us. We want them, you know, to be with us when the, when the Lord is revealed for the second time. And so, uh, I want to make it very clear today that this second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, as we said yesterday, you know, the, the second coming of Jesus Christ is imminent. It's, it means that it can happen anytime. It can happen today. It can happen tomorrow. It can happen, you know, 20 days from today. It can happen 100 years from today. You know, we don't know when that is. But one thing we know, it's sure. It's imminent and it's going to happen. You know, Apostle Paul, at his time when he was living, he believed that the Lord was going to come around the time that he was alive. Actually, you know, he talked like a, a person that will not see death. And, um, you know, in talking to the Thessalonians church, he was telling them that for we that shall be alive at that time of his coming, you know, we shall be changed. We shall be changed. And so he was talking, you know, uh, believing that it was going to happen immediately. But, you know, many years have passed on and Jesus is still coming. And we continue to believe in that. That's why we call it the blessed hope that we believe that it does not matter when that happens, you know, and it is not in the knowledge of anyone, not even the son. Only the Father in heaven, you know, is in control of that. And that is going to happen. So that means then that we need to get ready all the time. We need to be prepared for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, his coming, you know, is what, uh, for the believers, is what we, we refer to as the rapture of the church. And this term has been used a lot. Of course, this is a wonderful uh, experience that's going to happen. It shall be horror for many, but it shall be wonderful for the believers. You know, for the people that do not know Jesus, it's going to be a horror because people will leave this earth. People will be taken up what the word of God calls to be caught up together, you know, in the skies. People will be caught up. But, and, and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, people will disappear. And they will be taken up with, by Jesus. This is what we are calling the rapture. And that is going to happen. And immediately after the church has been taken, then the next thing that shall happen is what we know as the, the tribulation, the great tribulation. And my friend, you don't want to be at that time when there will be a lot of problems that will be taking place. The world will be going through a lot of turmoil. You don't want to be living at that time. You don't want to be left behind. You don't want to be the person that has been left behind. If you are born again and that time comes and you are left behind, it is going to be very disastrous for you. The word of God in Luke 21 and verse number 36 says, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all of these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That is an encouragement there. You know, Dr. Luke is saying, you know, in this word here, he records these words that watch therefore and pray and always so that you may be counted worthy to escape Praise the name of the Lord. I pray that the Lord will help us to escape these that will happen at this particular time and hour. I pray that the Lord will minister to you in the mighty name of Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 17 says, And after that, we who still are alive, you know, and are left, will be 
caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is what we were saying. That for us, that we shall be still alive at that time, at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes for the church, you know, if for us we will be alive then, then we shall be changed. We shall be caught up together in the skies. But first remember, it is for those that have died first and they were born again. Those that are already dead, those ones first will be changed. Their graves will open. They will be given a new body and they will be joined up with the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. And they will be the first ones. Then the following, you know, will be for us. You know, and I also say that the, the, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, it was declared in the scriptures as we read yesterday in John chapter 14, you know, and verse number 1 to verse 3. Let not your heart be, be troubled. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And I, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you also may be. Praise the name of the Lord. So, this, And this was also confirmed by angels in Acts chapter 1 and verse number 11. When Jesus was taken up into the heavens, you know, the word of God says, Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here in uh, why do you stand here looking into the sky this same Jesus um, who has been taken from you into the heavens will come back the same way that you have seen him go into heaven that was a confirmation by the angels when Jesus was taken up it means then that he will come back again the angels confirmed it praise the name of the Lord and we, we, are, we also said that his time of coming is not known because because, you know, from First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 2, you know uh, very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. You know, Paul encouraging this church in the Thess Thessalonians church, telling them that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. For the people that are not born again, it shall be a great surprise. But them that have been waiting on him, them that are born again, then it shall be the glorious hope. You know, it shall be the day they have been waiting for. The Lord will change them and they will be taken up into the heavens. Praise the name of the Lord. Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 36 all the way to 42 says, But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Hallelujah. Only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the, at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken away and the other one will be left. Two women will be grinding uh, uh, with a hand mill and one will be taken and the other one will be left. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day, you do not know the time that the Lord will come back. This is supposed to be an encouragement. It's supposed to be a caution for, that, for us that are born again. We do not know the time. We do not know the day. That means that we need to be ready all the time. And for you, my friend, that is not born again, this is supposed to be a caution that Jesus is coming back. And because he's coming back and he, he is surely going to come back, you need to be ready. You need to give your life to Jesus. Because if you don't, then you will be among the people that will be left behind. You will be among those people that will face what we're calling the tribulation. And it is said it's going to be a problematic time. It's going to be a difficult time for people that will be living at that time. And I believe the Lord Jesus will have taken the church with him at that particular time. So therefore, for us that are born again, we don't have to worry about the tribulation. I believe Jesus will have already taken the church before this particular uh, issue of tribulation comes about. And how? And why do I believe that? I believe so because, you know, you know, we are told that the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is imminent. Therefore, it means it's going to be the first thing that shall happen. 
before the tribulation. Praise the name of the Lord. And when that happens, then it means I will not be there if I'm born again. It means that if you're born again, you will not be in the tribulation, but you will be with the Lord Jesus Christ. He will wipe your tears. He will, uh, you know, uh, 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 give us the rewards according to the work that we did. Praise the name of the Lord. And after that, then there will be all the problems on the world. Tribulation will be taking place. People will go through troubles that they have, they have never ever experienced. Matthew 24 says, For then there will be a great dis dis distress. There will be great distress. And equaled from the beginning of the world until now. And never to be equaled again. It means that the kind of problems that will be there. The kind of you know, uh, 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 you know, problems that will be there. They will be so so great that they have they cannot be equated. They have never been, and there will never be any other like it. You know, that particular time. This is what we are saying. It's called the great tribulation. The Antichrist will now have appeared. He will be forcing, of course, people to take the mark of the beast. You know, you will not be able to buy anything until you have the mark. You know, you will go through a lot of troubles. You'll go through a lot of suffering, a lot of persecution that will take place. Praise the name of the Lord. But the, the good thing is that for the church of Jesus Christ, we will have been taken up into the skies. We will be with Jesus. Hallelujah. And for the period of tribulation, the word of God talks about seven years. And in this period, you know, we will be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And after the seven years, the Lord will come back again and he will come back for the second time and this he will come together with the believers what is now known as the revelation of Christ and that is the time that judgment will take place the devil and all his hosts will be thrown into the fiery burning you know lake of fire they will be thrown there they will be judged forever all the sinners will be judged at that particular point why because the day of judgment has come Praise the name of the Lord. May the Lord continue to give us hope as the church of Jesus. To know that you were born again at such a time as this. And you need to continue keeping your gown clean. Because Jesus is coming for the church. And when he comes for the church, he will be with the church for seven years. And after the seven years, he will come again. What we call the revelation of Christ. And in this time, he will judge the world. And he will establish his rule and his domain in the world for a thousand years. That's what the word of God says. Praise the name of the Lord. May the Lord minister to you and help you. If you're not born again, you don't want to be caught up in such a situation like that. You don't want to be in a situation of such what you're calling tribulations. The Antichrist, the devil himself, he will appear in person and you will see, you know, what you have never seen before. May the Lord help us that we can, you know, think about this. And if you're born again, it also means that you put your garment ready. Have your gown washed by the blood of Jesus. You know, have your heart washed by the blood of Jesus. Be ready at all the time for we have seen two people will be walking together. You know, one will be taken. The other one will be left. Two people will be, you know, you know, working in a, in a particular area. The women, they will be grinding together. One will be taken. The other one will be left. That's what it exactly means. It, it will be also, two people probably will be in the church. One be, will be taken. The other one will be left. Don't be among those that will be left behind. Don't desire to be left behind, but desire to go with the Lord Jesus when he is revealed for the first time. Father, I thank you for your word, and I've spoken this word of yours, God. I pray that you continue to speak it again to, your, to the hearts of your children as they listen to it, and as they forward it to their friends that are not born again. I pray for everyone that is not born again, that they will be convicted, that they will come to make that decision of knowing you as Lord and as Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Tomorrow we continue on part three of this message. And the Lord be with you in Jesus' mighty name.